we all want to build like a very powerful AI video model that can really help creators mm -hmm. realize their creative ideas in a more efficient way and to make video creation more accessible. Hello, Demi. Thank you so much for joining us today. You are the founder and CEO of Pika. I'm super excited to talk about all you're building in the AI space. Before we get into like the nitty gritty of AI right now, I'd love to know a little bit about you. Tell me like where you grew up, where you're based now, and just a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So um, I was born in actually in Silicon Valley. Okay. Um, um, and then um, I spent some years in Asia and then uh, went back for college. So I did college at Harvard and uh, um, before doing Pika, I was doing AI PhD at Stanford. Okay. And how did that kind of experience being born in Silicon Valley impact your interest in like the tech space and the AI space? Did that have a big, you know, effect on what you were interested in as a kid? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, I was always going to Stanford summer camps, mm -hmm. things like middle school or high school. Uh, I actually uh, chose Harvard because I know I'm going to come back to Silicon Valley to build a company mm -hmm. uh, and, and probably, uh, you know, do, do an AI PhD at Stanford. Um, so definitely like growing up in Silicon Valley and also surrounded by a lot of friends who are also doing startup, who are also in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. uh, definitely, you know, um, inspire me more to, uh, you know, about like building a startup and also help me, help me more to understand the space. Yeah. When you were a kid and you were seeing, you know, these peers or family friends or just people in your neighborhood and your community building startups and building in the tech space, did you always want to be a founder? Did you always want to go into the tech industry? How did that kind of impact like which route you wanted to go down? I think I, I definitely, you know, um, got a lot of inspiration from surrounded by a lot of other founders and being in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool um, that, you know, uh, everyone has, is working on something they're really passionate about right. and is really trying to like work towards this idea of making, using technology to make something that's very impactful, mm -hmm. that can impact everyone's life and that can really, you know, push the frontiers of technology and really change the world. How did you find that you're passionate about passionate about AI and the media space? Yeah, so I I was always really interested in arts uh, mm -hmm. and creative stuff when I was young. Uh, I grew up in a very uh, creative family. Art, I was an artistic family, mm -hmm. so I have two sisters. One sister uh, studies film, okay, and the other sister uh, studies fashion design. My family are also uh, really into art, so we have a little, like, cute little art gallery. Um, so I always grew up, you know, wanting to, to be a writer and really interesting poetry. So um, that, you know, that piece of me is, you know, was basically with me when I was young. Mm -hmm. But I also started programming since elementary school. So I've been doing like AI, I've been doing computer science. Uh, and AI for like know, seven, seven or eight years now. Okay. Because of these two passions, I, I was always very excited to do something that's like intersection between like AI and creative stuff. Yeah. So using AI, I'm also never a professional like artist. I'm not professionally trained. So I will, I will always you know wanted to use technology, use AI to really like help me to realize some of my creative ideas. Yeah, and it's such a fusion of the two kind of passions of yours. So today, Pika is an AI platform that allows people to create videos, correct? Out of basically either a prompt or an image that they have. Can you walk me through exactly how it works, what people are using Pika for today? Uh, so um, for our company, we train an AI foundation model, meaning like a AI model uh, that can do anything around video. They can understand video, can generate video, and can edit videos. Uh, to be more precisely, the way people interact with, you know, our model uh, is um, there could be a lot of different ways. But the ba the most basic way is user can enter a description, mm -hmm. which we call a text prompt, uh, to describe what video you want to generate. So, for example, you can say a dinosaur <laughs> dancing in a shower. So the video then it will output the AI model will output literally at a dinosaur, yeah. um, you know, dancing in a shower. Uh, you can also, you know, use image um, inputs to, and then to ask a model to animate the input image. So for example, you can upload your own painting 
and then tell the AI model uh, the way you want to animate your own painting. You know, to be more broadly, that you can always you can also edit your own video. So, for example, mm -hmm. you might upload a selfie video, and you can add a I don't know explosion effects. Um, you know, inside your selfie videos. So how does this technology work for someone who like does not understand the AI space and they don't understand that when they input something, they get an output? How would you describe it to people who are just like not in your industry and are looking for a little bit of insight into how this is like magically turning what I'm typing in into a video? The way it works is we train like a large AI model. Mm -hmm. So um, basically the model learns from a lot of data, which mm -hmm. is a lot of videos, for example. Um, so, um, you no, know, like the model will learn by, by seeing, just like, just like us, by like reading a lot of books, mm -hmm. we have more knowledge. Totally. So the AI model is similar. So by seeing a lot of videos, the model starts to understand what is, you know, what is a video? Like, yeah. you know, when, when you have a ball, you, you know, you drop it, you will fall into the ground. So the model starts to understand these physics and understand uh, you know, to, to predict what people react and um, like all, all, all these things mm -hmm. by seeing a lot of, you know, data. And are you got, did you guys build that AI model from the ground up? Is it on top of, you know, a platform that already exists? Or mm -hmm. how did you kind of come up with this model that's then facilitating all this? Yeah. So we're a very technical team. So we actually built our model from ground okay. up. Yeah. And what was that process like? What does the team look like? Who did you have to bring on to make this thing happen? Yeah. So both me and my co-founder um, were all AI PhD at Stanford. Okay. So we are working on, I work on AI for content creation at Stanford. She work on like diffusion model, which is um, the, the the class of models behind like image and video okay. models. So we also, you know, you know, we were basically doing AI mm -hmm. for, for video space. Um, and, you know, since we started company, we obviously brought a lot of more people to the team. Um, so a lot of engineers, a lot of scientists. So including people who were like, um, like top researchers at the top academic labs, such as Stanford, MIT, and also, you know, top researchers from the top industry labs like Google uh, and, and Meta uh, and, and Microsoft. What was your pitch to these other experts in terms of like why they should come and work with you? Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good question. Uh, I think. You know, uh, I would say usually because we share the same passion. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we we all want to build you know, like a very powerful AI video model. This is very uh, at the same time also building a, a a a video AI video product that can really help creators mm -hmm. to um, you know realize their creative ideas in a more efficient way and to make video creation more accessible. So we share the same dream, and I think it's very exciting to us because we're, you know, pushing the frontier of the technology by building, you know, try, by, by building the next best like AI video model, but also trying to redesign the way people make mm -hmm. videos, uh, which is all very innovative and very exciting. What do you see as the biggest use case for Pika right now? Is it for just an everyday user, an influencer, a content creator on social media, an advertisers? What, what is the biggest kind of you know, cohort of people who are using the platform. Yeah, so uh, right now we see a lot of, mostly are people who are interested to do creative videos. Mm -hmm. So which could include like a film or it could also could include like a commercial. Mm -hmm. And uh, it could also include, like this could be like more professional filmmaker who are exploring using AI to make a low budget film mm -hmm. or make a social media videos. Uh, it could also be like um, someone who is like, who are from like completely non-tech and non-AI backgrounds, such as like, you know, accountant or like IT worker, yeah. who are interested to make a, a short, you know, create a piece as a side project or for their children. Do you have any examples of projects that have been created on the platform that you have just been blown away by? Yeah, definitely. Like there are a couple examples. I wish I can share some visuals, um, but we do see people who are like. For example, reproducing a commercial that they made a long time ago, and now they're using AI. They're able to. I think the commercial was like 20 people for like two months with like I don't know, more than 100k budget or something. Mm -hmm. And then using AI, it can be like one two people team for like one two days with like below a thousand dollars. So, uh, which is very exciting. Yeah, we also began to 
explore some use cases that could even be more consumer and more accessible to people who have no creative background. Mm -hmm. Do you see that efficiency in terms of like the finances being cut significantly, the team being cut significantly, the time being cut significantly? Is that the biggest opportunity here or are there other things that people are looking to these platforms to improve on? I definitely feel like the way I think about it is there are like people who are professional. Mm -hmm. So in that setting, it's more about like making it more efficient, right? And um, you know, like if you're an artist, the hope is that the AI model can really serve you mm -hmm. uh, to assist you to, so that you can focus on the creative idea part, uh, not the manual work part. Right. So really make it the process from idea to execution in a much more efficient way. But we also are starting to explore and uh, use cases that are a bit more, even more accessible to for like more consumer users. Mm -hmm. So for them, like it might not be like making it efficient, but more about like making them be able to create stuff. Right. So helping them to be creative uh, and to uh, express themselves, express the ideas we have. Uh, maybe like, for example, like I think we all have ideas like maybe we all have dreams to be able to um, you know, realize your wild ideas into some visuals. Totally, and bring that thing to life. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Because I think a lot of people in the creative space, in it, journalism for one, but also in video, in photo, across you know many sectors of business, there's a big hesitancy towards AI because they don't want it to replace the people who are doing it currently and doing it in you know more of a manual way. What are your thoughts on that? What would you say to people who are maybe hesitant about mm -hmm. the industry because of that? I want to tell a story um, for, for that question. Yeah, please so, do. Uh, that's actually why I started Pika. It really inspired me to start Pika because I was trying to make a AI film mm -hmm. uh, myself before starting Pika. Uh, and at that time, we we're trying to use AI. We have like we do live action, we do our live action shots, mm -hmm. and then we're trying to use AI to and make it into animation. So that was like before Pika. That process really makes me realize two things. One is, you know, the the film making process is still very very difficult. Mm -hmm. Like maybe like even green screening for a couple of second clips can take a lot of time. Um, but more importantly, um, we were a group of, because it was an AI film project, we were a group of AI PhD students and computer science students. Um, we don't have any visual creative director. We have a really good script writer. Uh, we don't have a visual director and we really, really struggle on the visual. And then the film, even we have the most technical team, um, you know, uh, the film doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. And that's something I like firsthand realized the importance of artists. And all first time realized AI is not gonna replace artists. Mm -hmm. Like the way I think about it is AI is really enabling our possibilities, but the human, the artist, is a person to guide AI yeah. into the right direction and eventually become a masterpiece. And that's also become something we really value, we really care about in our company. We have a lot of artists, we have, you know, our our first hire is actually a creative director. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, you know one third people from a creative backgrounds, and we are really trying to build. We're not trying to build a like automatic automatic AI video generation platform. We're trying to build an AI video tool for creators right. that can serve creators and enable people to do more interesting stuff. Definitely. Where is the AI model that you have getting this information? You said it's learning from what exists today to kind of, you know, put that into its own work. Where is it learning that information from? We learn from a lot of various sources, of, uh, like videos, data that we, we curated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, very, so you guys have curated the information that then you're feeding into the model that it learns from? Yes. Okay, yes. very cool. And then just in the in terms of like the future of AI, obviously video generation, photo generation, like it, there has been a lot of movement on it, but there's also a long way to go. You know, you see mm -hmm. the pictures of, you know, AI generated portraits and it has like, you know, multiple extra hands or, you know, the eyes are, you know, crazy yeah. or whatever. So how do you, what do you see as the future of AI video and content generation? Where are you going? What are the next things that you're really preparing for? Uh, we definitely see like, you know, the technology and a lot of the AI video product is still in the more prototype phase mm -hmm. and more like a fully commercialized phase. Um, and, you know, uh, this is, but at the same time, you know, this is because the technology is still improving, right? right? We're still improving the technology and our company is also trying to push the frontier of the technology so that maybe we can commercialize even more. Mm -hmm. And if it, this is a, a process, but we see there's so much progress even in one last year. So the acceleration speed is very, very high. Mm -hmm. 
and and I cannot like you know one year ago I think maybe like our company just started one and a half like, more than less than one and a half year ago mm-hmm. and I think like two years ago like AI video is just not a thing yeah that you cannot actually generate any sensible videos and now it's a, such a leap forward from that time and I can like I'm I'm very certain that in the next one year or two years hopefully like we can already have you know you know more even more commercialized mm-hmm. you know you know AI videos not the model and but also the product uh, in, in in our in, in the reality yeah definitely the last question I have for you is you and the company have raised more than 140 million dollars in investments and you have millions of users on the platform and like you said that's just in a you know a couple years time frame what's your best piece of advice for other founders in the AI space right now that are trying to embark on this rapid growth like you have seen? For me, I think what's important for me is um, to work on something that you're really passionate about. Yeah. I think because I really care about like myself is, you know, it could be our kind of the user. I, I used to use our tool to create our marketing videos. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important you work on something that you're really passionate about. So you are very motivated to make it happen and you also really enjoy the process. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. This is super cool to hear about all your building. So thank you for taking the time. Thanks so much for having me. 